E and be off. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's really nice seeing you in today's session on Mahara 2004. And um, all of you have been using Mahara for a really a long time already. And so I'm really happy to be able to show you the highlights of this new version that um, some of you might be able to get sooner rather than later and others might be waiting until the summer is um, upon us in order to upgrade then probably even to 2010. Nevertheless, um, I think it um, will be good for you to see the uh, what's new in Mahara 2004 um, because that way you can also decide whether you might want to have um, one or two of the new features backported. Um, a lot of times that is definitely a possibility. Um, we would just need to look into that and see how to make that happen. Um, so today's, uh, on today's plan is to show you a number of the new features that we have in Mahara 2004, which we just released at the end of um, April. That's why it's called 20 for 2010. Uh, yes, for 2020 actually, sorry. Um, for the year 2020 and um, 04 for April in 2020. And um, so we'll be looking at a few features that are in regards to usability improvements, new features for portfolio authors, and then also a number of features actually that uh, will help um, administrators lighten their workload um, if they have in particular single sign-on available on the site, um, because we do want to look at improving the platform for everybody who's um, using it, who's working with it on a regular basis. And that of course is not just students or faculty, but also the administrators. And so each version of Mahara gets a number of improvements and they are in the range of um, new features, usability improvements, technical updates of um, third party software that we are using, as well as um, bug fixing of bugs and also improving our own infrastructure. Before we can get into the new features though, um, there is definitely big things that needs to go out to everybody who's been involved in that release. Because as usual, we've had contributions from all over the world in many different ways. So while we typically, of course, see the code contributions by having these new features or changes available in Mahara, um, there's also many other people who contribute, namely our um, translators. Then we also have graphic designers, our system administrators who keep our infrastructure up and running, um, BA and UX uh, specialists. Then we've got testers, um, document people who write documentation, people who organize events, um, code review, front-end developers, and those of you also who are in support because it is also very important to, to get to know how people are using the platform, what works, what doesn't work, and support them and help them out, um, get the best out of it. We also have the security guard, people who will report as security vulnerabilities that we can then fix. And anybody actually also just um, our ninjas, uh, reporting bugs and new features um, that we should be looking into. We of course also have students and then faculty, instructors, lecturers using Mahara um, who are important members of the community because they help us um, actually create and further develop the product um, in order to serve the needs that portfolio authors um, have these days. So big thanks to everybody um, again who has been instrumental in small ways and big ways in this release of Mahara um, because without everybody involved um, the new version wouldn't be where it is today. So now what do we have in this new version? Um, I'm going to start with a number of features that you can see as portfolio creators and um, some of them are kind of really smallish um, but do have a big impact. Others are bigger and have even a um, much bigger, bigger impact. So let's start with one of the small ones that you might see very easily. 
If you're on a Mahara site that has multiple languages installed and um, you wanted to switch between your languages, in the past you always needed to go to the preferences, um, just one, two, three clicks to get there and then choose the language and um, change it around. Alternatively, of course, you could do that before logging in, but oftentimes one would probably forget. And now, thanks to one of our clients, um, we could implement a language chooser, which makes it um, immediately possible to switch to a language directly from the main navigation area and um, have the interface displayed in that language. And yes, as you can see here, we have a fully translated language pack in Te Reo Māori um, that was created by Ian Cormack, um, who is working in the area of um, digital technologies and translating digital technologies things in New Zealand, and who has worked with a lot of people around the country, lots of organizations and also the government um, to provide Māori translations. And so we are very grateful to him to be our resident Mahara translator and um, have the translation available. And we also have um, Japanese and many other languages um, on Mahara so that you can install all of these on your site to make the site more accessible to people who would like to navigate um, Mahara in any of those languages, which can oftentimes also be really, really good for language learning to have that immersive feeling. However, as you can already see here on the right-hand side, um, any content that you create will not be translated. That's still a feature um, that is um, very different from uh, translating the interface, but maybe at some point in the future, we will be able to have that available as well. Kind of going back to English now, um, if you are on a multi-tenanted site, um, of which at least a couple of you are, um, which means that you know, there are several organizations using the same Mahara instance, it, uh, at times, it can be quite difficult to find the people that you're actually looking for um, because they are just too many that have the same name. And so what we were able to implement on in Mahara uh, 2004 is thanks to funding uh, provided by Vyatimata DHB is the possibility to show people from your organization first and only then people from other organizations when you share your portfolio with individuals. So when you search for them, um, everybody from your own organization comes up first. And um, also when the, the search is reduced um, so that when you start searching for names, it is kept that um, everybody from your own institution is displayed at first and therefore can be found more easily because we often assume that, of course, most sharing will happen within an organization. And um, therefore, it is good to see those people come first. Um, the other nice thing that we have in Mahara now is especially those that have been working on a site for a very long time is that you can group your groups. So that means if you have a very long list of groups, you can now organize them. We are not talking about folders and such, um, but more in the, in the area of tags. Um, we are calling those labels so as not to confuse them with the tags that you can put onto a page or artifact or collection, but have these personal group labels available. And so, those um, labels allow you to just add or remove some, depending on whether you still need them, and save them. And then, when you click on one of those labels, your list of groups that you're a member of is automatically reduced, so that you really only see that label. Um, you can also filter for a second label and a third one, if you like. And instead of narrowing down the search, 
we are widening the search parameters so that it shows all groups that have the label 2020, all groups that have Aotearoa, and all groups that have archive. Um, in contrast to say every group needs to have all of these three labels. So that we can show really a wide range of groups yet also limited um, and give people lots of um, options for selecting, um, yeah, for combinations. And this is a feature um, out of Switzerland from PH Burn, which is really nice um, for lecturers who are in lots and lots of groups, also need to stay in the old groups because they want to keep them, yet don't always want to have them shown on the All My Groups page or even here in the sidebar. In the sidebar, you can reduce that list as well by going to your preferences and then displaying only groups labeled with and select the one label or multiple labels with groups that you'd like to see in there and of course also still be able to sort the groups. And the third place where you can use this feature is on your profile page because there you can have the my groups block and you can select yet a different a combination of labels. So in those three places, you can have very different um, views of your groups because maybe on the profile page, you really only want to show certain groups um, that, that might even be just public um, where you're a member of, but not necessarily all the groups um, that have anything to do with assessment. And that's how you can easily regulate it because any group that you're a member of um, can be labeled by yourself. And those labels are only visible to you. So you organize your groups personally in contrast to having the organization of the groups done on the, um, on the site level or by an institution administrator. They can use categories for that. Sticking with the groups, um, when we have large organizations, um, there's certain times when they say, well, our default group settings should be kind of different than what the Mahara team has decided on. And so in the past, we, we of course could make changes there, but um, those needed to be done um, in the um, database in order to have them available. But now we do have an interface. And um, with that interface, you can change all the group settings um, so, for example, away from open to request, it needs to be a course group, um, only administrators can create content and the like, and allow submissions, for example. And so any group created after you've made those changes will have these settings applied. And so whenever a new group gets created, um, it will come with those settings. Because it's default settings, you can, of course, still change them. Um, and if, for example, a regular um, site member would create a group but doesn't have site staff or, or doesn't have staff or administrator permissions, then they would still see the normal um, default option, which would be um, standard. So certain options, of course, are only available to certain people on the site. Um, but it is very easy then to set up all the groups that you need with these parameters, rather than needing to have instructions for your lecturers on how they can change those settings to the default settings that you deem the best um, at your organization. And that is a very nice feature, really, especially at the start of a semester. Um, if when you need to set up a lot of groups or when teachers want to set up a lot of groups, um, it also helps with web services because then our groups can be created automatically directly with the default settings that you like to have. Um, and of course, if you use a CSV file import there, you can already define the group parameters. Um, but um, this setting is in particular nice for any manually created groups. And you can change those settings at any point in time as um, site administrator. Therefore, um, having one particular setting for when you need to upload a certain or create a certain number of courses, then change it for another set and then have it open for um, the rest of the semester, for example. So this is entirely up to you and it functions very similarly to the 
um, to the templates that we have available for the dashboard group profile page and also the the regular page because you can adjust all of those as well and then anybody creating um, a page new from then on will have that template applied also if a group gets created new afterwards they will have that or the group homepage will have those settings and so on what you're not changing is anything that already existed before then, because people could have made um, certain changes themselves already that they would like to keep. Now, while we do want to keep people on, um, on Mahara, um, at, at certain points, it is necessary to actually export your portfolio. And so in the past, we've always said, well, do a HTML and export and do a leap to a export because you never know if you need to or if you want to put it back into another Mahara instance in the future or if you don't have a Mahara instance and therefore need the HTML export. Well, that, of course, begs the question, why don't we just combine the export? Because we have so many instructions around and explanations about HTML and leap to a is and people need to make decisions when um, Submissions are archived there currently or before 2004 were only archived in Leap2A. But sometimes it would actually be better to also have them available in HTML so that the portfolio doesn't necessarily have to be imported into Mahara. And so we are looking at the same number of artifacts that need to be exported. Why not combine the whole thing? And that's where we are at. Um, when you create an export in Mahara 2004, you will automatically get both HTML and leap to a And when you import that file back into Mahara, um, you will, um, the, the leap to a file will be chosen and otherwise ignored. And as you can see here, there was also something about PDFs. Because besides combining the export, which is already in itself, I find really fantastic thing. We also have the possibility to um, export portfolios in HTML these days. So what you can do is um, see the leap to a export and something that go wonky a bit and also the, oops, Sorry, something happened with my export right now. Better choose one from yesterday. Um, so you can see your HTML export and then also the leap to a export and the um, PDF as well. So if we're taking a look at an export I made earlier, there we've got the Leap2A PDF, all the portfolios available as PDFs. And that means one PDF per page, or if pages are in collections, one PDF per collection. And then every page within the collection is a new page. And then also the HTML export. Now, the nice thing about um, this PDF export here is that you do also get the artifacts along the way um, and therefore not just have the PDF file itself, but you can still access um, any of the files they have uploaded, like um, text files or spreadsheets or presentation files, which you do currently not get when you uh, click the print to PDF option. Um, on each page. And of course, the other advantage is that you just get um, an entire collection as PDF. So this feature, because it's a massive one um, that we were able to implement thanks to an organization also in New Zealand, um, is um, available as an experimental feature at the moment. So that means that it is available in Mahara. It does work for the most part. Um, so you can export portfolios, um, they are being exported, the, the pages are being created and so on as PDFs. However, there are still certain elements that we need to check that need to be strengthened or where there might still be more bugs than um, 
we would like to have um, if we released it as a normal feature. And um, then you could have thought, well, why did you put it into Mahara? Well, we do want to put it into Mahara so that people can start working with it and can start trialing it. Because unless uh, the feature is in the site, people oftentimes don't have access to it because they can't customize the Mahara instance and therefore would not be able to actually um, get access to it. But now you can put it on the test server or also have it available um, for your um, for your community members on the, the pop on your Popper Mahara site and allow them to export and seek feedback from them. Um, because it'll be interesting to see well how does it behave with extremely large portfolios that are one gig or two gigs or over. Um, what um, what happens when you have lots of different artifacts in a page. And those, of course, are all the conditions that we, we are also testing ourselves. However, as we know, because content is created by people, it'll always be good to see, well, what do the real portfolios look like in an export? Do we have certain um, special per uh, requirements or certain parameters at our institution that make it so that um, there are certain other things that need to be taken into consideration for the export. Um, what happens if there are 10, 20, 30, 40 portfolios um, waiting to be exported? Should we always be using the export queue and so on? So there's lots of stuff that still needs to be looked into because it is just a very massive feature. Um, and therefore we did want to make it available but as an experimental feature so that um, administrators also know that um, they do kind of need to look into it and be a bit more careful and take a closer look as well, especially when starting to use the feature. Um, before we get to all of the single sign on goodness um, that is also has improvements for people and also for administrators. There is uh, one last feature that I wanted to show you, which falls into the area of um, usability improvements in particular. So when you are on a normal Mahara site at the moment, um, you have those lovely tiles that kind of show all the portfolios that you have. Um, and either be it pages or collections. However, um, that can sometimes actually be quite difficult to go through because every tile looks the same. So at the last minute, we were able to put in another feature that allows you to have cover images on your pages and also on your collections. And so if you, for example, go into a collection in the settings, you can choose a cover image. We recommend um, that you do upload a very small image um, so that it is also small in size, doesn't take a lot of time to load um, and make that available. And so you can just upload an image and then select it and be done with it. And then it has a new cover image there. And if the collection or the page has a description, then it comes in as overlay so that that information doesn't get lost. And so that's how you can nicely visualize um, all your pages and collections. And as you may have seen here, um, another feature um, in Mahara, if you do need to restrict the uh, file upload to certain extensions, then you can do so now. And on the site level, a, site, uh, an, a system administrator can define which extension are allowed on the site and therefore the rest will just uh, be not allowed. And that list can be extended. So this list is entirely up to the site to decide if they wanted to restrict um, certain file types. And now with these tiles that we have, um, we can look into many other ways and places where we could use them. So instead of just listing portfolios, we could have the tiles as um, instead and make it really nice and visual to see, well, which portfolios do you want to look at? Um, or um, the other idea is to also use it on the group homepage um, to represent groups on that um, groups overview page instead of just the list, have that tile view in order to make things a bit more visual. So those are 
kind of a lot of improvements um, for portfolio authors already, but we are not quite done yet. And so I'd just like to show you a few that are connected to single sign on. Because especially when we are looking at um, using Mahara in larger organizations, so pretty much all of you um, could be included in that, then it is oftentimes desired these days that instead of creating accounts manually, we are actually connecting to a single sign on. So to an authentication method that brings all the account information along. So first name, last name, email address can also bring on uh, bring along a profile picture. Um, that is also something new in Mahara 2004. And um, just to make it easier to set up accounts, to suspend accounts, remove accounts, or prevent access to accounts. And um, so one thing, of course, was that in the past when we enabled single sign-on, um, the SSO button was always very, very, very small and the, the normal login screen um, or login box overwhelmed. But when you have single sign on and everybody needs to log in through that, then of course it would be better if it was the other way around. Um, namely that SSO was more prominent. And so we've already made that adjustment um, a lot of times just by customizing Mahara um, in order to show the SAML login button more clearly and hide the regular username and password um, underneath. Now that functionality is available in Core Mahara and when you set up single sign on, it automatically does that to the login screen. And um, instead of SAML login, you can also have your institution name there. And of course also change administration login if you like. Now once we are logged in, um, it is possible to then also move an account. So right now, when somebody wants to move an account from one institution in Mahara to another institution on the same Mahara site, um, an administrator always needs to get active because while students might request um, that they move their account um, or an institution administrator can invite them, if it is connected to single sign on, you still need to change the authentication method around. And so Switch Portfolio in Switzerland, um, who, are, who has a number of uh, Swiss tertiary um, institutions on combined on one Mahara site, um, had the idea of that automatic account move for institutions that use single sign on. And so that's what we were able to put into Mahara 2004, where you now have um, the move account possibility and see all the institutions that have single sign on um, enabled. And so in this case, I can click my single sign on provider. When I send the request, I am being forwarded to my authentication method so that I need to authenticate and say, yes, um, I actually have a login um, in the SSO. We then receive an email and then can confirm my account move. And all of that very smoothly without any, um, any time that an administrator needed to become active, which is really fantastic because it does save a lot of time for admins when they don't have to do, uh, when they don't have to move students from a regular account into an alumni account and just take care of the authentication all the time. Now, while this is already a really awesome feature, there are a whole bunch of others connected to single sign on that I also want to show you briefly. <coughs> and um, we can find them in the institution settings. And when setting up a single sign on authentication method. Because in the past you've already had kind of just metadata refresh URL so that when um, the metadata changes on the server, it can automatically be fetched. That you could restrict who has access to Mahara based on certain attributes in single sign-on. Um, but now what you can do is send through a profile picture if the profile picture is stored as base64 encoded image in single sign-on. Um, and you can also send through certain roles so now if in your single sign on um, authentication method, 
and direct or directory rather, you have somebody with the role admin and you want those admins to automatically have admin permissions in Mahara, then you can put that in here into that so-called role mapping um, in order for them to automatically have site admin in Mahara. Or if you have um, lecturers that should automatically have staff permissions in Mahara, if they have a role that is easily identified as this is all lecturers, then you can put that in here and map it so that when they log in for the first time, they automatically have the lecturer role. If at any point they were to become a student and not a lecturer anymore, then they would, um, then the uh, lecturer role would be removed automatically and they would only have the student role. We also have the possibility now to set up a kind of support person in all groups um, that are created either just in the institution or on the entire site. Um, because if a person has a particular role, like call it su um, support, then they will be added automatically to every single group that is created in the institution. And they cannot be removed by a group administrator. And um, they are also subscribed to all forum notifications or to all forum posts so that they can get notifications. And that is something that um, many institutions probably don't want to enable, but there are certainly others that might need it, um, especially if it is required that support is available in every single group or that, uh, that groups need to be monitored for whatever reason. And therefore, we made this functionality part of Mahara Core as an optional one. It is also possible to have this role then automatically administer all groups on the site. And also, it is possible if you have um, a very large um, single sign-on directory that covers many organizations, that you can actually just set it up once. And then when people log in from the individual organizations, their Mahara institutions are set up automatically. That's a lot of goodness, lots of possibilities there, especially to manage huge Mahara sites and um, prevent that administrators do a lot of the grunt work in just setting up institutions, um, giving permissions and so on. And so that's why I did want to share all of these nice features with you. If you're kind of looking at some other new things in Mahara that you will see is that when you look very closely, um, you won't see the term user anymore for anything that is uh, or that learners can see. It's still lurking around in a couple of places in the administration area, in particular when we need to communicate with other uh, software. But for the most part, we wanted to get rid of the term because in English it does have a negative connotation um, quite heavily. And we wanted to make sure that the language we use in the software and also in the community um, is, is more human friendly. And so we are actually calling users people. And that means in certain parts of Mahara you, where you normally encountered the user, um, you will see people. So you don't search for users anymore, you search for people. Um, you don't have users in groups, you have group members. You have account holders, portfolio authors and institution members. Um, we still use the term username and to use um, because it it's still in the transition of seeing what better terms we can um, employ for all of these. But for the most part, at least when, when referring to people, we do want to make sure that we acknowledge that everybody is a person. Um, and only in, in one case here with account holder, is it a bit borderline where you might think, well, that's kind of a very... Um, Take, taken back term, but sometimes we just need something that is, is not quite technical, but um, that we can have instead of user um, and therefore have still something that refers more to the account um, than anything else. There are a whole bunch of other features as well in Mahara 2004 because this session really was just on the highlights. Um, some of these are fairly small yet still impactful. Um, for example, if you're using the peer assessments and the sign-off, um, 
peer assessors that have not yet made an assessment before the sign off was made now do receive a message saying, well, that's this is why you can't do anything anymore. And also the sign off block now contains information on when a portfolio was or when a portfolio page was signed off and when it was verified and by whom that was done so that we do have that immediate trace as well in case there are any questions. As usual, all of these new features are documented in the Mahara manual um, that you can access and then find those new features because they have our little Mahara bot um, at the start. Um, you can also find it through the index entries and in the manual on the what's new page. Um, there is also a short version of this webinar, um, the feature video in which I'll go through the highlights in a very condensed way. Now I'd like to invite you to actually download and install Mahara if you're managing your own site or have a chat with your support company if you um, have assistance from them to manage your Mahara site and see when it is possible for you to um, work with the new version, make use of the new features and make them available to your communities. Now with Mahara 2004, that also means that Mahara 18.10 and everything before is out of support. Um, therefore, 18.10 will not receive security updates anymore. However, we also know that some organizations may not be able to move as quickly and install a new version of Mahara typically every year or latest a year and a half for how long we support versions. And that's why we have a new premium service available to community members on a paid basis, um, which is the extended security support. That makes it possible that one version of Mahara um, that is officially supported for a year and a half gets its support security support extended by two years for that uh, client that is purchasing the, this premium service in order to still receive security updates for Mahara for an additional 24 months. And the same, of course, already with 1904, which will, whose support will end in October 2020, that with the extended security support, it can be supported until October 2022. So that is just an option that we wanted to make available to community members because um, we do know that some might need to stick on a version longer than um, than they might um, yep yeah, then might say need to stay longer and can't upgrade as quickly. Um, but we also want to ensure that their environments are being kept safe and um, that any known security vulnerabilities that we are being made aware of are then also backported to them, um, but really done on that um, yeah, premium level rather than the um, regular community support, uh, which allows us to still release versions of Mahara rapidly um, every half year in order to make those available. And then between those major versions, we have um, security updates and minor version updates in order to fix high level bugs and any security issues that have come up. If you'd like to discuss any of that or the new features of Mahara or maybe even backporting some of those new features of Mahara, um, please do feel free to get in touch with me or of course also with your support company if you have one um, in order to figure out how you either can upgrade um, extend your security support or backport some of those new features to your own instance of Mahara. And that now means that we have exactly 15 minutes time um, for any of your questions, comments, or if you'd like to see anything else. Hi, Christina. I don't have any questions at the moment, mm -hmm. but um, that looks really interesting. It should be quite exciting to um, upgrade for us. Which, fe which features, features did you, you like best? A lot of the features you showed are, are some of the things that some of our uh, people have been asking for, so mm -hmm. looking forward to it. Yeah. 
And Brenda, yes, um, the SSO login button will be especially great because um, I think you do log in with SSO and therefore it will be nicer to have that built in and not worry about the customization there. Yeah. I'd definitely be interested to hear and um, also to see if, if you prefer to write um, which features you liked best of these new ones that you're looking forward to most to being able to uh, make use of. Personally, I like the um, being able to put images on the group tags tabs because it does it adds interest and it mm. it makes it easy to identify things and it just yeah. it removes that boring. I've got a whole stack of tabs here that I yeah. I've got to read through to find out what it is. Yep, exactly. I think that's a really nice feature. Yep. Um, Linda, because we have images for our papers in Moodle, so um, having a similar thing yeah. in Mahara makes it quite yes. nice and compatible. Mm -hmm. That is a very good point, Brenda. And um, Linda, around yeah, having that visualization available, and it is certainly something that we are looking more into. How can we, um, how can we visualize data? How can we visualize things in a nice way? Um, because that just helps taking in information more quickly, rather than needing to scroll through a very long page. There, yeah. Um, I'll just stop the recording here for the moment, but we certainly can still talk, um, but just...